16,000 hundreds of clubs all over the world, and it was born in the United States 100, almost 100 years ago. Uh, what do we do here? We practice public speaking, our communicative skills and leadership skills. So we have an educational program that we follow. You can see some parts. In the first part of the meeting, you will hear some projects uh, that people prepared um, following these parts. So, what else can we say? In the uh, in the part after the break, you will have the uh, table topic session where all guests and all all of us can participate. And now I would like to welcome our Vice President membership to welcome our newcomers for today. Thank you. Okay, are there any newcomers? Girls? I know there are. Mm -hmm. okay. Take the stage, please. Yeah. Hello, Toastmasters, dear guests. It's a very time to introduce our new friends, uh, our newcomers. Uh, please come to the stage. <laughs> Just some easy questions. So we need to test your IQ before <laughs> doing our club. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> uh, all we need to know is some information about you. Uh, please uh, answer, some, answer for question. It's uh, your name, uh, your occupation. How do you know about our club? And what is your expectation from this uh, experience? Could you please start? My name is Ketchkin. I'm working as financial reporting manager in a big company, uh, preparing reporting for their uh, American branches. Uh, my friend Francisca has invited me here, uh, and I just want to get new experience to learn something new about public uh, talkings about uh, leadership. I am a Toastmaster member for about maybe two years. I'm a member of World Surfers Club. I've never been in other club or in Toastmasters, and I decided to try uh, how to be uh, uh, atmosphere in uh, other clubs. Uh, and uh, my, my first uh, uh, not World Surfers Club is Toastmasters. So, uh, I will come there. <laughs> Um, my name is Dima. Uh, I work as a um, market manager. Uh, I come to this club to practice my English and public speech. Okay. Uh, my name is Tanya. I'm an international manager of, uh, of the festival, theatrical festival Golden Mask. Maybe somebody who knows this festival. Uh, and uh, I heard about this uh, club from my teacher, English teacher, and uh, he told me that my goal can be here because uh, I need to, uh, in accordance of my work, I need to present the festival and I need to work as a host uh, for, for a lot of people who came to Moscow and I would like to practice this kind of work and uh, so that's why I'm here and I hope that I can do it here. <laughs> My name is Nastya, and uh, I'm a translator, uh, an English-Russian translator. Usually I work with movies, uh, series, uh, mostly with animated series. And I'm here because of mere curiosity. I was just scrolling through the schedule of uh, this library, and I just thought, hmm, an English-speaking club, I'm interested. I haven't practiced my spoken English since graduated from the university, so why not? <laughs> So, 
according to your goals, uh, we see that uh, I can say without any hesitation that you're in the right place. It's a place when, where you can polish and practice your public speaking skills. And I think uh, even today, uh, you will have an opportunity to participate in the table topic session and practice your public speaking skills. For now, please have a seat, enjoy the meeting. So, for tonight, we have quite a staff schedule. And uh, back to you. What do we have next? Today I'm also not just a vice president education, but also a toastmaster. That's a person who leads <laughs> uh, the first part of the meeting. And for today we have a very interesting subject, time traveling. Oh, it's very mind-boggling. So I didn't sleep well today trying to explore this subject. I think many of you have um, ever thought such things as, what if I can go to past and can fix something? Or what if I can go to future and learn some very valuable information? So people started to think about this theme for a couple of centuries and uh, in fiction and in movies, uh, they explore this uh, subject very often. So, what are the most famous books or maybe films you know about time traveling? Back to the Future. Yes, I think it's the most popular. Anything else? Time Traveler's Wife. Doctor Who. Yes, Doctor Who, yeah. <laughs> very few people know about this series. <laughs> and yes, this is fiction, science fiction and li uh, literature. What the science says about time traveling, is it possible? What do you think? Yes. Yes? Only to the future. Yeah, no, only to the future. You can look more carefully at this. So there is a lot of paradoxes. <laughs> For example, grandfather paradox. Look cl more closely. Do you get it? Yes. So. If you go to the past and kill your grandfather, you wouldn't be born and wouldn't kill your, <laughs> kill your father. But, so it's uh, all impossible to travel to the past. But there is also another paradox. So it's called twin paradox. It's about traveling to future. It's based on the Einstein's... Um, what's the? Theory. Theory of, what's the name of the theory? <laughs> relativity. 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 Yes, there is a relativity. 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 Yeah. Okay. You know it. So it. Um, one of the concepts says that if a person, when the speed is very fast, the time shrinks. So if a person will go somewhere far away at the speed of light, it will. Mm, the time on Earth would last longer, and so his twin will get old, much older in a, in five minutes. So it will took years and minutes for them. So um, for now, it's impossible to travel in time, but I can say that there is actually a time machine here in this room. What do you think it can be? Not this one. <laughs> I believe that our mind is a time machine. With our imagination, we can travel almost everywhere, and in the past and in the future. And it can take us and bring us the frills and also the safety, because we are safe in our own body, but we can imagine everything. So now um, I asked our participants of this, of this meeting, what do they think? of time traveling and where they would like to go in the past or in the future. And so we'll start with uh, the meeting and I will introduce our joke master for today, Alina. And she said that she would like to go in the past to be a witness of some um, precious um, situations of her family, to witness these memories that are shared in the family. Am I right? Yeah. Alina, take the stage with your joke. Hello, everyone. So, how is your 
day. Uh, how? Don't <laughs> try again. Okay. How is your uh, uh, <laughs> How is your morning started? So, if you are working, it's uh, like a um, uh, doctor or a teacher or someone else who day by day goes to the uh, job at the same time at the same road and do you know these feelings? Mm -hmm. It's uh, really routine mm -hmm. and uh, you like um, zombie, yeah? <laughs> and uh, you, your eyes are opened but your mind still sleeping in your bed. And uh, today I will speak about guys like that. So yes, imagine this uh, with me, how it was in real life. So 7.30, subway, and we all sit on the bench in the uh, train and um, a lot of people in gray and uh, black jackets and uh, it's nearly autumn now and everybody uh, sitting on benches and looking nowhere or sitting with closed eyes and at this time she entered in the train and she uh, wearing a uh, police uniform with a uh, tight skirt and uh, white gloves with jacket with uh, lieutenant shoulder straps and uh, she go to her place and oh my god she start to put off her jacket you should see you should have seen this picture because she was really silent in that time but everybody was uh, has woken up and <laughs> it was really funny to look at them because uh, their heads up one by one like a chain and she uh, wasn't uh, some extraordinary girl it was a usual girl and uh, she wasn't top model but her movements when she put off her lieutenant jacket was exciting and it was really nice so in one time for everybody this uh, morning turned to be a beautiful wonderful and uh, you could have seen how their faces was changed how their eyes was open and how <laughs> their backs uh, was straight so yes wish you look around you every day and find something that can uh, inspire your morning to a good uh, day thank you okay now i will introduce one of the main figures of today is our head control the time man Evelina Mankiriova. Evelina, take the stage. And speaking <laughs> about the Evelina, she, on the contrary, wants to go to the future, yeah. maybe to the 23rd century, to know how would technology change us people. Mm -hmm. Evelina? Uh, so, hi everyone. Today, uh, as the time, I'm responsible for monitoring time limits for uh, Toastmaster speeches. And uh, I will show you uh, these sheets. Uh, so I will show you the green light when the speaker has reached uh, his uh, time limit, his minimum time limit. Uh, the yellow one uh, when the speaker um, uh, uh, th uh, 30 seconds before the speaker goes beyond uh, his time limit. And the red one uh, when the speaker has exceeded uh, his allotted time. Uh, and at the end of the uh, meeting i will report on uh, <coughs> uh i will give it a report uh, covering those uh, speakers who have exceeded uh the time limits so that's briefly it that's a brief uh, uh, introduction to my role today thank you we are having five speeches today that's why i uh, insist <laughs> that all the speakers and all the roles uh, don't break their time limits. Be careful with time today. So the next person, uh, 
of today's meeting is our account. That's a person who um, will count all our filler words and unnecessary sounds. She will count how many times I will say ah. Uh. And uh, this is Anna Soltis. <laughs> And she also wants to go to the future, maybe a uh, hundred years ahead, um, to see what are we doing there. <laughs> well, the next important role is for grammarian and wordmaster. It's going to be Valeria Halatkova. And she is the person who wants to travel the, how to say, furthest in time. She wants to go seven billion years ahead to see how our how our sun explodes. So <laughs> it's and speaking about the explosion of a star, it's very isn't it interesting that the uh, life of a star is billions of years, but it can explode in hours, in days. I, am I right? In seconds. In seconds. Can you believe it? billions of years in just a second to explode. Well, and Valeria, I introduced the word of the day, that is paradox. Um, paradox, we've already mentioned some. So it is a person, a thing, or a situation when there are two opposite things, and that's why it looks very strange. For example, the story, um, it was a but the story was a paradox. I, it was funny, but eventually uh, it made me cry. And we've seen an example of paradoxes already. So use this word as much as possible, and Valeria will choose the winner. You can also choose um, uh, derivatives like paradoxal and paradoxical, and maybe some other that you know. Valeria? Um, <laughs> Well, now it's time for our first speech. Ivan wants to go also to future to see if humanity still exists. And now he will present his speech how to reward and recognize your employers. Ivan Chepnagatic. There is the clicker. This way is forward. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yes, you should know that last time I got the feedback because my the, my speech's objective today is to incorporate feedback from last time. So last time I got the feedback that everything was great, but I was missing a presentation, so I incorporated a couple of nice pictures. So before I start today, you should know the motivation for my speech, and I want to tell you a little story about this. So I'm working with my girlfriend on her modeling profile. And obviously she is the body in this and I got the brains. So I am telling her how to work out, what to eat and how to pose. And I know I have this problem that sometimes I find it hard to praise people. And I made a conscious effort to praise her. But still she would complain. And I found this quite paradoxical. And I would ask her, okay, what's wrong? And she would tell me, well, you do not appreciate me. So often, our evenings would end up like this. Me being happy on the computer, and she was, well, sitting sad by my side. So I did what any good, well, boss would do. I googled how to reward your employees. And I came, I came across this very interesting article which explain the difference between reward and recognition. And this is what I want to share with you today. And the first thing that you have to know is what is a reward? And a reward is a direct compensation for a service done. So a person does A in order to get B. For example, a teenager which cleans his room because he wants his parents' car keys. He gets a clear reward for a clear action. The other thing is a recognition. What is a recognition? A recognition is honoring someone for something they have, they have done. It has an element of noticing and honoring. It's a 
honor for an accomplishment. For example, a soldier which has served his country in a war. You would never think of giving the soldier a cash bonus, and you would never give the teenager a medal for cleaning his room. Why is this important? Why do we have to make this distinction? Because it impacts, both of them impact different motivational subsystem, subsystems. So if you want to reward someone, there is an element of extrinsic motivation. What's that? Extrinsic motivation means that you are motivated by something well, outside of your own mind. For example, the teenager with a car or getting a cash bonus for a service that you have done. If you want to recognize someone, this impacts their intrinsic motivational subsystem. This means that you recognize someone for, how shall I put it, for, for their commitment, for their commitment to the, to the cause or for their loyalty, for example. But this is very important for several, several reasons. We want to be able to know which system to choose. So we want to know if we want to reward someone or if we want to recognize someone. Because both of these systems, they impact different behaviors and they will cause different behaviors. If, for example, you want to reward someone, there is a certain element of control because you give the person an incentive to do something and then they do something. But if you want to recognize someone, then you increase their loyalty and their commitment. So the person essentially becomes more loyal to the cause if you recognize them instead of rewarding them. And this is important because if you choose the wrong motivational subsystem or if you choose the wrong kind of reward for the, how shall I say, wrong behavior, so essentially you want to reward someone instead of recognizing them, then there will be a, a dissonance and the person will not understand what's going on. So recognizing someone increases their commitment and their loyalty, whereas rewarding someone will increase their adherence to the rules. And if you are, for example, a company, you want to know what kind of, well, behavior you want to stimulate. So do you want to make your employees follow the rules or do you want to increase loyalty to your cause? And this is important because the second point is a competitive advantage. Whereas the first point can be easily replicated. Well, anyone can make you do something if you get the right type of reward. If you get what you want, you will do pretty much anything. But if you want to be really loyal to a cause, this is much more difficult. So obviously now you will ask yourself, okay, so how does this in practice look like? How do these rewards and recognitions need to look like? And I found four points. They have to be immediate. They have to be personal. I chose this picture because it's kind of personal, so I'm shaking hands. They have to be valuable and they have to be reinforcing. Now, I don't want you really to bore with, uh, what shall I say, with the nitty gritty of um, business theory, how exactly a reward or recognition scheme would look like, because I don't think this is really applicable for most of you or actually really interesting. Rather, I want to, what shall I say, close the circle and uh, give you an example of how I reward and recognize my own employee which is probably not really applicable again, but here still, although it's a joke, this is immediate, it's personal, it's valuable, and it reinforces good behavior. Now, you might not be together, how can I say, in a romantic relationship with your employee, but the next time you want to, and this is what I want to finish with, the next time you want to reward someone or whether it is in a business context or in a personal context, I want you to think about, okay, do I actually praise or appreciate or reward this person in the right way? Do I want them to follow the rules or do I want them to essentially feel appreciated, which is the problem that I had initially and which is why I came up with this topic in the first place. <coughs> this is what I want you to take away for today and this is also the end of my speech.
این مول باید سالی بلوس بلوس کای بلو بورت این دی لیک انورمس کوئنت کوانتیتی اف گالس دی پیکچر واس فروم فیلی تیل بات دی شیپ didn't stop for our succeeding in our relaxation, in spite of the fact that the picture at that moment was much better than on the eve. But something, something happened wrong, happened with our motto, our voyage must be from 10 to 12. It was 10.40. We had no food, no water, a bus at 6 o'clock, and besides this fact, <coughs> the Radio operator, which uh, was to hear our signal SOS, was on the board of our ship. It was our captain. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> and our Saver can be another ship, but at that moment stood at the other end of the lake and must be at this place only next day. And uh, information, the information about our situation can be sent only fishermen. But it was a big day. It was enough late uh, for boats, uh, which um, can, uh, could be uh, could return from fishing. And one hour, two hours. And at last, we saw one boat with a fisherman who promised that he uh, informed about our situation. And again, one hour, two hours, three hours. And at last, we saw At five o'clock, at five o'clock, we sat in the whole uh, local cafe, and as a reward, we had a tasty, very tasty dinner. The choice was twenty dishes. Next day, we sat at the restaurant of the best hotel in Arhangelsk. And <coughs> we had the following dishes. Salad from mild cured cucumber. The soup with mild cured cucumber. Beef, mashed potatoes, and the same cucumber only compote, compote was without cucumber. <laughs> of course, we <coughs> left the restaurant for the same price uh, as in previous cafe, hungry, and we watched for the dinner in Cargaport again. 
of course, in uh, our tools, we uh, can be in different, uh, can meet different events with plus and minus. But every year we try to try to organize to go to a new tour. Do you do the same? exciting thing is to see in ancient Egypt is to how do we build, how did we build uh, all, all those uh, pyramids without any you know mechanic, uh, motorized mechanic vehicles. So uh, now I would like to invite you also to the past but not to Egypt, to the Manhattan, New York, 70s and uh, to the office of a stockbroker. By the way, the name of the stockbroker is Harvey Maxwell. And as usual, in the morning, he walked in into his office and uh, to a snappy uh, <clears throat> morning picture and uh, threw himself into the big office chair. John Pitcher was one of his clerks. And uh, Next to Harry Maxwell's door uh, was sitting a very beautiful young lady. It was uh, his secretary and his stenographer. She was beautiful. She was beautiful, but in a humble way. She wore no no neck places or bracelets. Only a pair of nice but small earrings. And her grey dress was uh, stretching and fit your, uh, her figure in a very nice and discretion way. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> um, Harry asked him, uh, her, are there any news? No, there was no news. And the uh, young lady asked, asked Mr. Pitcher, Mr. Pitcher, did Mr. Maxwell say to you uh, say you anything about engaging in new secretary on my position yesterday? Uh, yes, and I uh, already called to agency and asked them to send somebody today. Okay, then I will work as usual until somebody come to my place. Okay, said Mr. Pitcher. The trade day started and uh, all the clerks ran here and there like sailors on the ship during the storm. And uh, just in the middle of the storm, another young lady came in with uh, long curvy blonde hairs and uh, asked, Can I see Mr. Pitcher? Uh, I'm here from uh, from agency for a, a, for a place of a secretary. Uh, yes, yes, please come in, said Mr. Pitcher. Uh, what kind of place? said Mr. Maxwell. We don't have any place of secretary. Mr. Pitcher, do you know anything about it? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you told me yesterday to, to call to agency and ask them to um, ask them to bring somebody for a secretary place, for a secretary position. I'm sorry. 
Are you going crazy? We have Miss Leslie and she has been satisfying us for a whole year and we don't have any questions to her. We don't have any position. So, lady, please excuse us. Young lady turned red and left the office quickly. The time was going to lunch and uh, Harvey Maxwell stood near the window and glazed to the, uh, to the Manhattan, to the skyscrapers and suddenly he felt a very subtle and sweet perfume near him. It was Miss Leslie who approached him and said, Mr. Smith will come in several minutes. Uh, okay, okay, told Mr. told Mr. Maxwell, then turned sharply and said, uh, Miss Leslie, I have, I have, uh, uh, I have something important to say. Uh, will you be my wife? What? The cheeks of Miss Leslie turned red and then white again. What? Uh, will you marry me, Miss Leslie? I love you and I need, need the answer now, before Mr. Smith will come in. So please answer me. Will you? Miss Leslie put her arm to the shoulder of Harvey Maxwell and said tenderly, Harvey, first I, uh, I was afraid, but now I understand that uh, it's your job who, which drive anything out of your head. Harvey, don't you remember? We married yesterday at six o'clock in a little church just around the corner. <laughs> Thank you, Vadim. Mm -hmm. Our next speaker is our guest from World Surfers, Artur Tuzbekov. And Artur, I'll try to remember, where would you like to go? I could... Can, could you say it yourself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to go to my uh, childhood when I was young and tell uh, myself some advices what to do to be successful. And I think mm -hmm. if I implement some of these advices, I will be more successful now. And now I remember you said that you would like to tell yourself to, to learn English yeah, and English. informatics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> good evening, dear Toastmaster members, dear guests. Uh, uh, my speech today to see or not to see. In 2011, uh, without no visible reason, I felt pain, pain in my back. Every move was every move was very hurtful. I couldn't uh, see. I couldn't uh, normally walk. It was uh, big pain every time. I went to a doctor and uh, he uh, prescribed me some medicine. And after one month of uh, very intensive medication, I was recovered. Sometimes I felt pain a little bit, but everything was normal. Uh, he also gave me some advices uh, about exercises which I should do, and I uh, implemented it. Everything was normal till uh, in the beginning of 2017 I played football and uh, the problem uh, happened again. Absolutely uh, shocking uh, pain in my back and uh, my teammates helped me to get in a taxi and I directly go to a doctor. Same diagnosis, and uh, uh, the most importantly uh, here is that the uh, situation is getting worse. I asked uh, the doctor why uh, I have such paradox. Uh, my, uh, I do exercises as you uh, uh, suggested me, but the uh, problem is uh, getting worse. He asked me few, uh, some questions and uh, told me uh, such type of problems is very uh, common for uh, people, uh, for office workers. and. Uh, Probably you need to stay more. Uh, uh, I started to uh, analyze uh, that uh, 
it's uh, certainly 95% uh, of my time I'm sitting. I sit when I'm eating, uh, I sit when I'm uh, on the meeting, I sit when I'm, I'm calling somebody. 95% uh, uh, of, of my uh, working time I'm sitting. Uh, I decided uh, what sh should I do. Uh, there are a few ways uh, to change uh, that situation. Uh, first way, a uh, new job. Some profession, uh, in some profession you don't need to sit too much, you could stay a uh, whole day, but uh, it wasn't my case. Uh, I life, life my job and I don't uh, imagine uh, other job when I need to stay like this. I found solution, uh, it's uh, standing desk, uh, and, uh, but uh, implementing uh, that uh, solution, uh, while implementing, I faced with two problems. First problem, uh, I came to our administ administrative uh, department and asked them, guys, could you provide me with such table? They said, no, it's not possible, uh, because uh, we don't have it in our standards. After a few emails, I understood that it's not possible, uh, really, uh, and or, or it would take me a few months. I searched internet and found solution. Uh, the guy, uh, uh, organized uh, such place by himself and I bought, uh, it's my actual uh, working place, uh, bought an IKEA table for 600 rubles and uh, everything was fine, it's perfectly fit uh, for myself because uh, uh, it's on my head, I don't even need to cut uh, legs of that table. Uh, another problem which I faced, uh, it's my colleagues. I think uh, I heard some jokes for 20 times, uh, same jokes for, from uh, different people. Uh, and uh, everybody have uh, an obligation to say me something funny uh, in, in his uh, Everybody came, uh, some, somebody uh, went with excursion, see the guy standing, and uh, everybody, every was, uh, everyone was shocked, and, uh, but they uh, get used to it. And, uh, uh, by implementing such uh, thing, uh, oh, it, it, these problems, I, I decided that, okay, laugh, it's your problem, uh, it's not my problem. Uh, you could laugh, uh, but uh, I have problem with my back, and uh, it helped me. Uh, now I, I don't have such uh, pain in my uh, backs. Uh, uh, I have more direct posture, uh, because I'm tall guy and uh, for me usual I walk like this now uh, my uh, posture is more uh, direct so uh, by uh, telling that speech I don't want uh, to motivate you to stay uh, on your uh, in a working place uh, probably for some of you it would be uh, not it, it's not uh, there is some pro problems with that uh, some problems with legs for me it's okay now I'm standing about three four hours uh, I still have meetings, I still have, uh, go to eat, and uh, there I'm uh, sitting. And uh, three, four hours I could stay without uh, any problem. Uh, I just, uh, my, my speech about, uh, 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 if you have some problem, uh, you could be creative as I was. And uh, don't be afraid to be funny, uh, because uh, well, it's a very serious problem, and uh, some consequences of funny, uh, uh, of laughing of my colleagues, it's not such uh, big as consequences of problems with pain. So, uh, in case you have some problem, choose uh, your way to see, uh, in case uh, you have problem and uh, you have a dilemma, like to sit or not to sit, uh, in a, uh, not in a direct way, I mean, uh, and choose uh, not to sit. And our last speaker for today, Denise Shevchuk. And Denise also wants to go to the past, to his toddler days, to his teenage days, to understand himself better. Welcome to the stage. In my humble opinion, it's better to be humble. Because if you are not, your life will humble you. But it's difficult to be humble for me. The first is 
I'm a man. We have to show ladies that we stand out. Like I have to show Alina that, hey Alina, I'm Dennis, look like I'm, I'm performing here, I'm better than the guys. You have to choose me. Or like a peacock, we will look at my tail. And it, the competition between guys is really tough. Let, let, me, let me give you a, an example, an example, a situation. Like for example, I'm telling Alina, Alina, you know, I really like you. I have a good news for you. Let's go to Himki together. <laughs> I have two tickets for train, not regular train, Lastochka. <laughs> and we'll have some, and we'll eat something in KFC there. <laughs> and Alina is like, well, better than that, nothing. And we're going to Himki, and then Vadim in his car, in his Mercedes, come by. And he just winks at Alina. And then Alina starts smiling. You know how I feel when you do that? It feels like I'm standing on a trap door, and it suddenly opens, and I'm and I dive and I'm sitting neck deep in mud. And Vadim is like, Alina, let me take you to a nice restaurant. You know how I feel when you say that? It feels like Vadim takes his foot, put his on my head and dips me into mud. <laughs> and he's like, and I think that I want to take you to Roma for two days. Right again. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, I'm like, Alina, let's go to Himki. <laughs> and Alina is like, Dennis, be quiet. <laughs> oh, I have to. Another thing is, men have to impress girls. Another thing is, my family is full of special people. Everybody in my family thinks that he or she is special and better than average people, 95% of people. And they tell me, Dennis, you're not as good as us, but you're still better than all the people outside of our family. And I've been told many, many, many times that I was a handsome man. Most of the time it was my mom, <laughs> but still, I was told that I was a handsome man so many times that I believed it. I truly believed it. So much so that I didn't think I have to take care of, take care of my hair, of my clothes, don't even have to take a shower that often. I was still awesome. <laughs> And there was one time I met a girl online and I chatted to her, like, hey, I like you. And she's like, hey, I probably like you too. Yeah. And we decided to go on a date. And we went on a date. And I have my thumb broken at the moment. And a dirty cast on my hand. And I was have my hair cut short. I had my a little dirty clothes on. And we were walking and we were talking. I tried to hug her a couple of times. And she was like, no, 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 then stay away. Stay. And I didn't understand what was the problem. <laughs> and when she actually left home, I, I approached my friends like, the girl is crazy. I tried to hug her and she's like, well, what's wrong with her? And the guys, oh, yeah, girls are crazy, Dennis, don't, don't mind them. <laughs> and then one girl, she's like, Dennis, has it occurred to you that she probably didn't like you? Imagine the situation. It's 3 or 4 a.m. You're laying in a warm bed. You're enjoying your dreams. You're being relaxed. And then a person approaches you with a bucket of cold water. And he dumps it on you. And you go, <laughs> that's how I felt. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean she didn't like me? <laughs> nah, she was probably crazy. <laughs> but, but I had some, a little, a little, doubt in my mind that probably I, I, I'm handsome, I am handsome, really handsome, but 5% of girls for some weird reason don't like me and I have to show them that I'm still good. So I decided to do it the best way I could, to do public speaking. And the thing is, do you remember your first speech? I remember. Oh, really? <laughs> really? How much time did it take you to prepare for your first because speech? I after your speech, Wait a second, I... it's my speech for the <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, How much time did it take you to prepare for your speech? Short day. answer. Month. What? Month. Month. Day. Day. One, day. day. One week. One week, yeah. right? One hour. My thinking was, the first speech takes from four to six minutes. I probably need half an hour to prepare it. <laughs> or an hour max, tops. So I spent about that much time and I went to the meeting. In the middle of my journey to the 
place, I realized that my speech takes 20 minutes. So I had to cut it right in the middle of the process. I came to the venue, and there was a several guests from other countries, from, like, from New York. And the tolls master introduced me like, Dennis, Dennis is a really prospective guy. We'll enjoy his speech. I was really nervous. So I delivered my speech, and back then, 10 years ago, we had a nice tradition. Several people came to the stage and evaluated your speech. The first person comes to the, sh the stage and she's like, you were supposed to tell us about yourself. Didn't do that. Then the second person comes to the stage. And I really respect him. That's why I won't tell he you his name, right? So Henry Norman tells me, <laughs> Dennis is a disabled speaker. <laughs> the third person comes to the stage and he's like, wait a second. Wait a second. Why are you so harsh? Look at Dennis. He's probably retarded. He did really well for his condition. Dennis, really good. Good, Dennis. Good, Dennis. <laughs> you, I felt confident in a lot of situations. And sometimes people ask me, how, how, how are you so confident? Can I be so confident? And I think if you ask me, if you ask me, confidence is not that important. It might be important for your success, but in my humble opinion, it's better to work hard and be humble. Thank you very much. So, it's a break time. Uh, help yourself to the cookies and water, and you can donate 100 rubles. We continue, and it's now for table topic session. The table topics master is Anton Boyka, and he will explain the rules. Dear friends, dear guests, dear Toastmasters, uh, now is a table topic session. I think it's the most interesting, sometimes most funny part of our meeting. And uh, today, as you know, the top our topic is time traveling. And my topic is time traveling also. Let's imagine that we and that uh, you are, not me, that you are the person from the past. And uh, now it's a great possibility to improve your speaking, skill, speaking skills, of course, and especially your impromptu speaking skills. And I, now I invite you to the stage and you, and you deliver us the speech. A little bit short, but quite enough to, to be nice from one up to two minutes. Please pay attention for our timer. And who want to be the first? So what's the scenario? I'm from the past, eh? Yes, you are from the past. And you are the person. To the future. Uh -huh. Let's imagine that you are the person from the past. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I'll take the stage. I'll take the stage. I just want to know what I'm getting. You will know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. You would be surprised. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, hi. No, 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 no. Look at the ah, look at the ah. So now, okay, now yes. I get it. Ah. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> ah well. Okay. I thought that was some random guy. Um, <laughs> Hi everyone, I am Alexander the Great and even though my name is great, I'm actually quite short. So I'm 1 meter 60, don't be confused by how tall I might look because these are these shoes. Actually in my time we only used to wear sandals but I came here and I was butt ass naked and just like in this movie that I saw while I was traveling to the city I thought that I might need some clothes, so I picked up these shoes. Anyway, in this time, apparently everyone speaks this super odd language. In my time, everyone just spoke Greek, and we made everyone speak Greek. But you people speak this very, very weird language, and the good thing is I got adapted to it quite fast. So, as you can see, I am already Americanized. 
And this is another thing which I found really strange, that you have this whole new country, which is called America, and it's really big, and they have actually something that we used to have as well. They have democracy, and we also used to have democracy, but like you probably know, the copy is never as good as the original, so their democracy is quite um, a mess, whereas our democracy was really great. Why is that? Because I was in charge of it, because I am Alexander the Great. And I really hope that in this time I can make the same great accomplishments, and even though it might seem a little bit paradoxical to you that the person from the past uh, will be able to achieve the same that he achieved that, that we that he will be able to achieve the same now like he did in the past I'm sure I can get it done Thank you very much. and the next is what is your name to copy me. I think it's a nice sign of recognition. And I admire that. I admire you. I admire this time. I'm happy. Especially the newcomers. Our newcomers, please. You're welcome. What's your name? Tatiana, Tanya. culture, but uh, I'm from Egypt culture. And uh, do you know anything about my, my, uh, how to say, uh, preparation for, uh, for saving my ski, uh, skin? Do you know anything, my secrets about uh, how to save the skin for the years and uh, for the for the whole time, very good, beautiful and uh, shine. Uh, so I know the secret, and if you want, I can tell you <laughs> about the secret. And maybe you know about uh, something of my character that I was very um, strong woman, very beautiful, and everybody liked me very much. <laughs> Yeah, Majesty, thank you very much. <laughs> Any more? Anybody? Me? You. <laughs> like everything is, uh, you know, every everybody has the vote. I mean, the voting rights. I don't like it. I mean, uh, in my times, there was a discipline. Uh, 
<laughs> everybody was like were afraid of me and uh, I liked it very much but now nobody nobody is afraid of me um, but w what can I say <laughs> Kazani is already, you know, <laughs> right in the center of the country. You did it very well I mean, in increasing my empire, so I'll give you five great for that. But uh, just, just uh, be humble, as our speaker said. Follow the rules and everybody, everything will be okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Goes wrong, go, goes wrong, uh, goes wrong with uh, nowadays. I'm just back from many years, 500 years or less. I don't remember exactly. Um, people just uh, uh, recovered me quite recently, and I'm really impressed what's going on nowadays with this with the scientists. At my time, I was able to do mathematics, astronomy, astrology, chemistry, everything, but now, now there's no such people. What's going wrong? I, I couldn't find any scientists who is good enough at all those subjects. What's going wrong with you guys? I think you need to do something uh, um, to change the, your education program, because nowadays uh, it's, it's very diet it's 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 uh, very differentiated and a very narrow uh, knowledge you have. What's wrong? For me, it was enough to have one apple to open at law. But now I don't know how much apples do you need. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we have enough time. Your yeah, friends, you're welcome. Maybe. Person, please. Welcome. At least, but not at last. Catherine the Great. Catherine the Great. Okay, guys. Uh, I see that you, uh, your ch your time uh, nothing changed. Where's uh, uh, ruler uh, the woman of uh, in your country? There's no. I, I think uh, your country is uh, going down. Uh, we need a woman uh, 
to rule that country. Only in that case, uh, uh, it would be uh, nicer and nicer every day. Uh, uh, I, I, some guys told me that in other countries uh, uh, there is a ruler uh, women, and uh, probably I will go there. But uh, how could I, I apply uh, to be a ruler of that country? Okay, uh, somebody have to vote for me. Interesting. Uh, in my time, it was another story, and uh, I think it was better because I born as a ruler and uh, I died as a ruler. Um, you, you have to change. Uh, okay, constitution. What, what is it? Uh, strange story. Uh, okay, uh, I, I'm going to another countries uh, like Finland or other. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you for the nice talks. And dear friends, don't forget about what you can vote for the best table topic speaker, the best table talks topic speaker. Uh, you can use this sign. Please screen by your Toastmasters is where leaders are made. Um, one of my learnings in the Toastmaster journey is when I joined, I thought that everything was about speaking, but then I realized that what I learned the most is about the leadership skills and how you can use it in your daily life. This is why we come for one of the most, or maybe the most important part of the meeting, which is the evaluation. Fortunately, I have a very, very, very group, great team. Um, I will start calling the personal evaluators, whom who are going to evaluate the, the speakers. So I will start with Ermek, who is going to evaluate the, the speech from Ivan. So please, Ermek. Dear uh, Toastmasters, dear guests, dear Ivan, um, what I can say, um, not much I would um, recommend. You already in advance speech. I will try to find some uh, sites where on, on which you can work on to improve your skills. In overall, it was a structure. I mean, strong introduction. Uh, you you gave us your personal story and your personal reason why you chose this topic. Uh, I mean, you, with your with your relationship <coughs> and. Uh, <clears throat> then you made the research and found out some some you know insights why people how to motivate people and what is the root causes of of an, of an effective motivation like the re reward and recognition and how they differ different from each other and uh, it was really interesting you used a lot of visuals 
and uh, made uh, some conclusion. Okay, about what we, uh, I mean, what size you can work on, what I would recommend. You cho uh, you showed us two examples of reward and recognitions with visuals. I mean, uh, a car and uh, Obama, President Obama. Well, um, it was okay, but you then you repeated this pictures in the end maybe it's n I mean it's not it's okay but uh, maybe you could find another you know visuals to elaborate on that also you you used uh, some visual like a joke I mean uh, in the end like you found you found your <laughs> your way how to resolve your um, problem, your issue with, with your um, girlfriend, uh, how to recognize uh, and motivate her. It, it was okay, I mean, to, to make a joke, but maybe you could tell us maybe more, you know, serious stuff, how, what, what, what was next in your, in your personal issue. Maybe you found out some interesting thing and uh, there was a like, uh, and after that you you see that the behavior changed or some kind of improvement uh, that you uh, experienced. Um, <coughs> what else? Maybe you took a lot of uh, you gave us too much theoretical stuff. Uh, like Im immediate person valuable. It was also okay, but you could find out some more examples like in companies and business uh, there was a like as is situation they did w this one thing and there was a like um, you know some to be to be situation and, I mean some kind of improvement and this kind of stuff so we can see in stories in stories and examples how how this worked it would be very interesting. So in overall it was uh, great and I wish you more great speeches. Thank you. So then we have the second evaluator who is going to be Tatiana, <coughs> who is going to evaluate Irina. So please. You follow Toastmasters? Yes. 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 Thank you very much for an interesting story. Uh, what can I say good about your project? It was understandable good. You demonstrated um, careful preparation. And most of all, it, was, it definitely was a personal story. Now, let me move to recommendations. First of all, you announced the objective of your speech. And I don't think it's a good idea because we all have agenda and it's clearly there. But when you are saying it's going to be entertaining speech, after, after dinner entertainment, people started looking for, uh, listened carefully and wait, wait for jokes, anecdotes, something, something entertaining, which I didn't hear much in your speech. Your speech reminded more just a storytelling, not entertaining storytelling. If your objective wasn't entertain, entertain people after dinner, but just tell something sad about you, honestly, I wouldn't tell much difference. I mean, if, you, if I heard your story with the objective tell sad stories, uh, or just stories, it would be the same for me. So and, uh, the drawback I always give you add some enthusiasm. Also, also structure. I didn't clear understand how many stories incorporate, you incorporated in your speech. Because, uh, because of the structure, I, I couldn't follow where is the end of one story and beginning of the other. In, in, I wasn't sure if it was sequence of uh, in one journey or it was different. I, I realized it, it was one journey, but it wasn't easy to understand. Also, do not hesitate to repeat names of the places and names of the people you deal with. Because you very often you say, it passed me by, it was brought to us, it, it passed by, it came through. It, and it's, at many points I lost the, the 
the plot of the story, who, who, who is what? what? What was it? The, don't hesitate to repeat the names. It's OK. Or use synonyms. Uh, or try to use less <laughs> pronouns. Uh, what else can I say? I didn't write down anything else. So overall, keep trying. I want to hear more. I want to hear the continuation of your uh, travel stories. So good luck with your next project. Thank you. Tom, so thank you for the evaluation. Just a small thing, like I think that the entertaining speaker speech in general is not only humorous speaking because that's another manual. So it's like a movie, it can be a different theme. A movie can be different themes, can be drama, can be horror, can be everything. So I, 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 every year evaluation is personal, so I didn't feel that you missed that part, like it, it had to be like super, like it, it, a movie can have different themes, so for me it was fine. But every evaluator is, is person. That's the point of being an evaluator. But then let's go with the third one, which is Nikolai, who is going to evaluate Vadim. So please. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, uh, Vadim had to leave, and I already gave uh, my feedback to Vadim during the break. And I'm going to share with you what actually I gave to him already. <coughs> Uh, I think Vadim selected the right uh, project, the right subject uh, uh, for the purpose of the speech, which was voice variety. And uh, because his speech was full of uh, dialogues, and that's a, a very good place to practice different voices, different uh, accents, maybe, and, uh, uh, to, to practice in terms of variety. That was good selection. Uh, I liked uh, uh, I liked his um, uh, examples where he used uh, man's voice, for example, where is news? What's news? Some metal voice in, in, in uh, I heard that was uh, good, though when I heard uh, a conversation of author of the story and uh, women the difference was not quite high. That, that's my observation. Which means it is an uh, area where Vadim could improve more in terms of uh, practicing voice variety. Uh, in terms of the uh, contest, uh, co uh, um, uh, content of the uh, speech, I have also a, co a, a point because what Vadim did, he selected a story, shrink the story to five minutes, but that's f from other author, that's uh, literature. <laughs> but he didn't mention even author of, uh, of that story. And uh, uh, within the Toastmasters we have uh, a requirement to have uh, a uniqueness uh, or, or personal uh, adding into the story, but I think that was not quite uh, high within the Vadim speech because it's exact translation of the existing uh, um, uh, literature. So that's uh, that's observation I had. That basically what I observed. Uh, that's exactly what I gave to Vadim. Uh, so that's that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next evaluator is going to be Adil, who is going to evaluate Dennis. Unfortunately, Dennis is not here, but we can learn a lot. Thank you. Dennis is not here, but I'm still here. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, Dennis has just left. Uh, just after his uh, speech, I think he realized that uh, tonight is the last chance to visit Sale in IKEA. That's why he'll be. <laughs> I'm joking. We <laughs> <laughs> have some, some serious issues to say. Uh, truly speaking, it's quite a challenge to evaluate uh, Denise's uh, humor speech, because uh, for those who don't know, uh, Denise is uh, one of the best humor speakers, not only in Busters Club, but in the whole Moscow area. <laughs> Just for information. But nevertheless, I will try. And uh, as usual, I, I will, well, let's imagine Denise is still here. Okay, Denise. <laughs> uh, I will start from the price, of course, as usual. 
uh, what I like best about your speech. Mm. Uh, first of all, uh, I heard lots of laughs uh, during this during your speech in the audience, and I think it's uh, one of the best indicator of the reality of the humorous speech. I think. If uh, audience is laughing, that's you are succeed. Uh, the the all uh, all in all the topic was quite good. The structure and the speech uh, with lots of uh, examples and cases from your own experience. Uh, I think it's a good point. Uh, you got uh, you you <coughs> you had the professional behavior on the stage. Uh, I mean the movement, gestures, uh, uh, eye contact. Everything was brilliant. Um, any speech, but uh, I think especially humorous speech, needs to be uh, confident, uh, comfortable, and which is uh, most important. Humorous speaker need to be need to believe uh, in his own jokes uh, that that his own jokes are funny. That's uh, the main point. And uh, from this point of view, I think uh, you did a great job. Uh, even when uh, you realize that uh, your jokes is not funny, you continue your courageous speech and uh, did not uh, didn't get uh, nervous during this moment. Uh, and of course, uh, I had some helpful suggestion that uh, during your speech uh, sometimes you was too serious. Uh, and we really, you know, in the audience, we didn't understand uh, you are serious or you are joking sometimes because uh, your face was too serious. And okay, I understand that uh, professional humor speaker uh, usually doesn't uh, laugh at his own jokes. <laughs> That's, but, but I think um, sometimes it's okay to laugh at your own jokes, I think, Denise, because. Um, the audience will feel more comfortable to laugh together with you at your jokes. And uh, that's, that's a point. As a second recommendation for you, Denise, I think, is uh, to catch the momentum when you need to tell the second joke. Because uh, uh, already proved by famous comedians that once the audience has started laughing, then they have some momentum when they're willing to laugh again. So that's why, Denise, you need to catch this momentum <laughs> and push your next job in the audience. And uh, the last but not least, uh, I recommend you to make a pause and let the audience to laugh. Because sometimes your jokes was coming after another and uh, people didn't uh, didn't have enough time to understand and laugh at your jokes. Some jokes need a lag time and uh, sometimes uh, it need half a second to understand the joke. And in this case, if you does make a pause, then the audience may never get the opportunity to laugh at your joke because you already did it. Uh, all in all, the speech was as usual, perfect. <laughs> Wish you all the best and uh, looking forward to your next speech. Yes. <laughs> so about this... Uh, we right. missed one evaluator of the post I'm project. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, my fault. So we have the fourth evaluator, the fifth actually now. So Ivan, Ivan is going to evaluate the speech of Arthur. So sorry, is he needed? Yeah, it doesn't matter, I guess. Dear Arthur, actually, your speech was great, and uh, you chose interesting story. You showed us personal examples and uh, your experience, and it was just great to show and share your workplace and uh, tell about some jokes about this place. It was your speech was clear very fun and easy to follow your ideas and uh, as your project was about body language I noticed that you used body language you showed this pain in the back you showed when you 
stock of cell phone. So uh, in general, it was it, it's done uh, nice. And uh, there are some points which I want to suggest you to improve. First of all, your amplitude of moving on stage when you just start your speech was, I think, too big. You just walked around the stage, and uh, maybe it's uh, it could be done better. And the most noticeable is that you uh, seemed like as you were in a hurry, and. Uh, I think it's better to use some pauses between your logical points and uh, maybe use some gestures to show some uh, some important points in your speech. So in, in other it was uh, nicely done and uh, I think with improvement this these three points which I noticed, you will be perfect in your speech. Thank you. Okay. Really good evaluation. So now we go to the to the last part of the evaluation which in which I'm going to invite Valeria. So she can give a evaluation for the current Maria. So Valeria, please. Keep doing this, keep doing this. <laughs> Thank you, Alrighty. Uh, I am the wisest, the wisest man alive, for I know one thing, and that is that I know nothing. That's the paradox of Plato. And we have to face the fact, although we think we are great at grammar, sometimes we make mistakes. So I'm here to help you not to make them, and uh, for the next three minutes, I'm going to point out some things that you might correct for the future performances. Let's start with mispronunciations, and I will start with the words that uh, sound alike but mean have different meanings, such as working and walking. It's not a big deal if you mix working and walking, because you know, basically it's fine. Well, sometimes you can mix them and mingle, but when you mix cheeks or chicks, it's a bit different. Mm -hmm. I had a great example uh, from my professor of English who said, this is how it is important. Important or impotent. The difference is huge. <laughs> percent. It's not percent. It's not percent, but percent. It's not consequences, but con consequences. It's not quality, but quality. It's not courageous, but courageous. Now, I have some words and phrases that are grammatically incorrect. You normally don't say billions when you say about numbers counting years. You may say billions if it's a simple noun, like in the series, the billions. Blonde hair. Blonde hairs is not okay. Hairs is where I'm right here on my, on my shirt. But on the head, they're hair. Big pain every time. I would probably say big pain all the time or every time I walk or stand. Public talking, that's interesting. Um, usually we say public speaking. Uh, plot, plot is a story. And when you speak about sort of ship, it's a raft. Uh, there's a huge difference between few and a few, and in the end and at the end. So uh, when we say few, it's very little, small amount. When we say a few, which means it's quite a lot, so mine is different. We can meet different events. Normally events meet us, not, not we meet them. It's very time, it's the right time. Tell sketches, I would say draw sketches would be better. And uh, most funny, what's the right form? The funniest. Misuse of words and articles. Past and future, our topic is connected with this. When we speak about timing in general, it's the present, the past, and the future. Then um, voice variety is okay, but I would prefer vocal variety. When you say turned red um, about the face of a person, what is the better word? Blushing. blushing. It's not turning red, it's blushing. It's normal. And um, articles. Faced, 
with problems, you know, faced problems. Famous with something, meaning like, you know, sightseeing, famous by something. Pay attention for, no, pay attention to. And there was a really nice phrase that I heard, at least but not at last. I think the, 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 the speaker wanted to say the last but not least, or something like this. And uh, excellent use of words and cliches, idioms. Mind-boggling. Great. Even, even if you wanted to say mind-blowing, mind-boggling is also good. Nitty-gritty. Absolutely fabulous. Do you know what it means? Nitty-gritty? Being at the heart of something, like in the center of something. Standing on a trapdoor. Nice. Catch the momentum. Very good. And I also like the difference in between intrinsic and extrinsic award and recognition, so we know it better now. And uh, the copy is never as good as the original. That is true. And yet the use of the word of the day. I wouldn't count Anna's use of the word of the day because she knew the word and she used it four times because she presented it. And I would also say, now it's word, but before it was world, which is really nice, but it's a wrong use of word. And uh, two people used the word paradox or paradoxical twice, and that would be Ivan, congratulations, and Arthur, congratulations. And that would conclude my report. Thank you. Very good. Well, that was a very exhaustive evaluation. Very good. I wish I could do as, much, as well as you do. And now we have the next evaluator who's going to be the ad counter. So please, can you come and give us a First of all, I have to say that sometimes I couldn't recognize uh, what sound was, so, especially with guys, was it a, uh, was it a, uh, so was something between, so I'm sorry. And uh, the winner of the day, I would say two people. Uh, first one is our Toastmasters, Anna Imina, uh, <laughs> who used the uh, best range of sounds, five A, uh, one M, Three A and one O. <laughs> and uh, the next winner is uh, Adil. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you use twenty seven F and twenty A. You use it nearly between every word. Try not to use it so much. And about our preparations or prepared speeches, the one was perfect. Only one or in table topics. Uh, Irina was perfect. And Irina is Arthur. You use something what here between A and A. And um, for table topics, Irina, I don't know who. Mm -hmm. Maybe Tanya, just uh, for uh, That's all. Thank you very much. So now we have the timer. She had a very tough job because we have a packed agenda. So please, can you come and give us your report? Thank you. Uh, so it was really tough. It was really hard to concentrate on time while listening to such interesting reports. Uh, but still, uh, as for the prepared speech, uh, Almost everyone fitted into the time limits, the time frames. Um, just a few uh, speakers, the first one, Ivan, but it was not so hard, just for a uh, use past the time limit, just for five, four seconds. So it was fine, I think. Uh, and uh, Irina, uh, it, you, uh, you have exceeded the time by um, 12 seconds. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the table topic speakers um, um, fitted into the time limits. Uh, so I think um, everything was good. Great job. Thank you. Thank you, evaluation team. I think you did a very, very good job. And um, as a general evaluator, sometimes it depends on the club, so sorry if I don't follow the steps of this club, but many times general evaluators from other clubs come and they see like how we follow the standards of Toastmasters International. There are 15,000 clubs, as you mentioned at the beginning. The idea is that we have kind of, we follow more or less the, 
the standard. So I think you did perfectly. Like I'm super impressed. I I, I like really everything, every role, like from the book. So thank you you deserve a big applause because you are very very good. <laughs> I have a checklist actually and I was following truly like and I would like to start with kind of the beginning actually with the preparation when when I, I started to do masters like I was like oh this is so perfect and everything but then there is a lot of job behind the scenes and I think that you did a perfect job as a VP of education as a Toastmaster perfect so well planned agenda five speakers excellent and I think that you you are the Toastmaster of the day, I think you you are actually you deserve it. And um, I would like to focus on a couple of things that could maybe you as a client could think a little bit. So when 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 people come, so Toastmasters is a re really encouraging kind of uh, organization. And and when someone new comes, like the idea is that the VP of Public Relations, the Sergeant at Arms, and, and Adil did a very good job today because he was the VP of Membership, he approached to the newcomers, but this is the first time in four different clubs that I have been to Moscow in which I see kind of some approach to newcomers. So, especially the most advanced Toastmasters, they should come all, always welcome to the newcomers. So this is something that you should think a little bit more about. This is something that we Toastmasters should do. But in general, it was very good. Um, Regarding the kind of the Toastmasters, I think you did a very good job. You you kind of asked everyone about the, the past, the future. You had a team, you communicated with the topic to master the agenda was perfect. I would think two small things that could kind of we have to think about. The first thing is that per people come here because they want to participate. And then when the when you presented the counter um, no the word of the day and the grammarian kind of you explained it, but maybe it would have been nice to give a little bit more of 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 this time to the stage to Valeria so she could have kind of had more an active role. And then I think it was the same with the ad counter I think. But shall I explain now? We cut the roles because of the time because yeah, we've okay. got five speeches. The next time, if there will be less speeches, they will have their full time. Okay. <laughs> okay, so then I have to hurry up because of the time. So actually, this she was very focused on the timing, and we spoke about this. So I think also you did this very good. And and I want to also point out Table Talks Master that he also, when... when I th I th actually, I want to point out this as a, something very good, because he followed like all the checks. For example, he, ha he had the topic, second, he explained the roles, third, he called different people and he was very active. And um, what I really liked is that when he said, do we have enough time? And I think this is very important because the, the topics master sometimes is, is used to, to see how much time we have and then we, you can extend it or shorten it. So very good. The only thing is that it's good if you start with more advanced speakers at the beginning, one, two, three, four, and then you call the guests because the guests know a little bit more what to do. The last point, and I think that is something that I have not seen in any club in Russia, that you might think about it, but it's up to any club. And I think my opinion is very important, is that when you are the Toastmasters, the Toastmasters has to set up the energy of the club, and when, you, when the speaker comes, you have to present the speaker as the star. So I would like to present Anna. Anna, she's an engineer, she has worked this, this, she has traveled in five different countries, and now she's going to speak about how it is engineering in all five different countries and how to run marathons. So please welcome Anna. So something like this, round of applause, and then Anna comes, and she's the star of the show. So in my opinion, this is how you can manage energy, and it would be nice if it could be managed a little bit like this. So thank you very much. I think it was very good. So now I have to do it.
want your feedback will help us to improve. the calendar next meeting we are going to have table topic contest also members of the club please register for the contest or go to the form and say no I'm not going to participate this information is valuable for us and the other contest will be humorous speech contest on the 30th of October and now one of the most um, Important times of the evening, we are going to announce the table topic winner. So, unfortunately, our president is absent and the treasures, I, I cannot find the ribbon. So, I will <laughs> praise the winner with a banana. And the winner is Ivan. Oh. You can come. Okay. Will you come? So we make well, commitment. Commitment. Commitment for for your recognition. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We also had a birthday of one of, one of our members. It was not yesterday, but a couple of weeks ago, and we are going to congratulate Anton. Boyka, <laughs> with the car. <laughs> you have a birthday this summer, yes? In summer, yeah. In summer, <laughs> yes. You, have, you were absent for a month. So, this is your card. Can we take it? Take it. That's okay. yours. <laughs> Yes, that's all. Yes, that's all. So I wish you all good evening. Come to the next meeting that will be on October 2. And if anybody wants to take a role or a speech, approach me. <laughs>